Bob's breakfast. So this obesity thing, mm. primary school children. This is the local government association. They've looked into these figures and they say the difference between five-year-olds or thereabouts when they start school in reception class uh, to when they leave at about 11-year-olds, they say that the weight just packs on. Yeah. And are they allowed to say that? Because you have to be very careful mm. when you talk about people who are overweight. Yeah. Because there's this whole thing of fat shaming and, you know, yeah, if you yeah. get into that. There is some very subtle fat shaming, though. Mm -hmm. If you notice these figures are represented in one of the papers today, in a pie chart. <laughs> I'm Graham Mack. Chris Hubbard has your news. A video has revealed a female holidaymaker shaving her legs in oh. a packed public swimming pool. I've seen it. Isn't it gross? It is gross. Oh, gross. <laughs> so this... It was filmed in Florida, right. and it's got her uh, perched on the edge of the water, just happily shaving away. Shaving her legs in a public swimming yeah. pool. And there are loads of people in the pool, mostly kids. Yeah, yeah, mostly kids. She's just happily shaving her legs. Um, people swimming past, seemingly oblivious to what's going on there, enjoying themselves. But meanwhile, she's there dipping a razor into the pool, cleaning it out, yeah. and then going for another shave of the legs as well. Yeah. I mean, this... this clip has been viewed thousands of times online now and been commented on again thousands of times with people generally going for the same conclusion it's quite revolting mm. and somebody else saying imagine the in inadvertent gulp of water that sometimes happens when you're swimming and with all the shaved hair in it as well yeah Ugh. and uh, the video is only very short so yeah. i'm hoping she stopped at her legs <laughs> Bob's breakfast. Lynn's on the phone. You're not happy. Uh, your piece on this morning's news about the NHS and diversity. Yes. This is what's wrong with the bloody NHS. <laughs> we don't want whole departments dealing with diversity. Why can't we accept that the best person gets the job? I know. It's very strange, isn't it? It's I mean, very the strange. the that they've got, and you think, why are they worrying about things like that? We're, th we're in a tick box um, world now where people are looking at the wrong thing and yeah. shaming people over the wrong thing. Now, yeah. if there is a problem with people from whatever it is, and you can be, you can, you, you, it doesn't have to be ethnic background. No. It could be uh, either a working class or yeah, there's yeah. all, all sorts of different yeah. ways to categorize people. What about people with disabilities in uh, yeah. senior positions and all that? If you can find, if, if you find that there is a discrepancy and it looks like there is, the first thing you need to look for now is you need to look to see if there's discrimination. You, and when you find it, then you need to cut that out. But yeah. all you're going to do by having these quotas is yeah. if there is discrimination, you're going to hide it. Yeah. You, you, because people won't see it. They'll go, oh, yeah, there's a diverse where they've got someone uh, who's uh, uh, from an ethnic background. They've got someone who's a gay or lesbian. They've got someone with a disability. Yeah. So there's no problem here. All you're doing is masking the discrimination. If it exists, you've got to find it. This will not fix it. This will help the discrimination by burying it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. In the yeah. meantime, shouldn't the NHS get back to helping people who are sick? Well, it precisely. And yeah. they need to do it more as a business instead of wasting so much money. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is. This this is this diversity thing is out of control at the moment. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely out of control. Absolutely. All right, yeah. thanks a lot, Lynn. Okay, thank you, Graham. Bye-bye. 106. Bob FM. Boris Johnson has been pranked. A couple of Russian pranksters uh, got him. One of them was pretending to be the Armenian Prime Minister. Boris totally sucked in, not realizing he's talking to Russians. He's dishing dirt on Russia. It's, it's very important for the Russians to, to know that uh, certainly the UK is absolutely determined to stand firm against them. And we will continue to tighten the squeeze on some of the oligarchs who surround Putin. I think the most effective measures that have been so far have been not just the sanctions for for Ukraine, but the the sanctions on uh, people like Mr. Deripaska and uh, and Rusal. Uh, and we will continue to look at ways uh, that we can uh, tighten uh, our grip, uh, in, introduce 
fresh sanctions on those who may have uh, ill-gotten gains, illicit uh, or illegally acquired gains uh, who are associated with Vladimir Putin. And we will continue to do that. Yeah, there are a lot of oligarchs, uh, Russian oligarchs in uh, in the UK, I know. And uh, so it's, I, I, I think you can find... Them. Yeah. Yeah, you, you 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 throw a stone in Kensington, and you'll you'll find you hit an oligarch. Uh, <laughs> you throw a stone in Kensington, and you find. Now, I don't know what's more amazing. Yeah, that this prankster managed to convince Boris Johnson that he was the Armenian prime minister. Yeah, or that the prankster was convinced that this man was Britain's foreign secretary. <laughs> Bob's breakfast. So it's back again, the Eurovision Song Contest. It certainly is, yeah. The most ridiculous idea for a competitive <laughs> event. We're going to have a contest to see who can write and perform the best song. Who takes it seriously? Not the UK for no, the last no. 20 odd years. We used to be really good at it. Mm. I mean, we're still really good at coming out with bad songs, but we're just not good enough to compete with the Euro trash, really. Yeah. Making Your Mind Up by Bucks Fizz was a terrible song. And if you want to see some more as they rip the skirts off... I mean... That's all Cheryl just... Baker credits their win too. Yes. But how... I mean, you couldn't get away with that now. No. I mean, they would not be allowed to show that now. I wouldn't have thought so. And whose favourite... Oh, Israel. Okay, now I don't know what Israel have got for us this time, but Israel have got form. Have they? 1978. Right. Israel won the Eurovision Song Contest. Did they? Yes, I was a small child, but I remember saying to everybody, Since when has Israel been in Europe? <laughs> and the song, not in English. Okay. It always sounded to me like, I want to be a polar bear. Oh, right. It's on YouTube here. Okay. Even more. In Norit Hirsch, this is conducting the orchestra for the Israel Entry song number 18. It's Terry Wogan. The song is called this? Back in 1978. Yeah, yeah. And here come Alpha Beta. Alpha Simple, Beta. peasant smocks, cream trousers, the girls all in white. And this is a good, vivacious song for Israel. Might do very well. This sounds like the radio commentary, actually, the way he's describing everything. Is it still on the radio, you're listening? I think so. Yes. I want to be a polar bear. I want to be a boy bear. I want to be a polar bear. I want to be a boy bear. I want to be a polar bear. Yeah, it does sound like it. Bob's Breakfast. Well, we're not famed for our glorious weather. Plenty of tourists think our food is a bit rubbish as well, and quite a few people think our teeth are gross, yes. quite frankly. Yeah. Uh, but there are some good bits to the country, you've got to admit. Uh, although not everybody who, who visits this country kind of agrees with that mm -hmm. and, and, and says they've enjoyed themselves. Uh, disgruntled tourist reviews have been shared on Google Maps, uh, the, the page for Great Britain. A lot of them pretty dismal. However, somebody did leave a positive review, mm -hmm. saying, better than average, but average as a nation. Yeah, see, but they're missing the trick of what mm. the great in Great Britain means. What does it mean for you? The great in Great Britain. Oh, goodness, I've never even thought about this in the past. The great in Great Britain. I mean, beautiful uh, places around mm, the country. Yeah, loads of places got yeah. beautiful places. Loads of countries got that. I was going to say the people, but we're a bit of a mixed bunch, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the great and great... Oh, did, gone. Enlighten me. This is the greatest country on earth. Because nothing is your fault. Hey, fatso. You're not fat because you eat too much and don't exercise. You're fat because we haven't had a sugar tax. Because the government aren't paying for your gym membership. So go on, open wide and have another slice. Hey, choking smoker. You can barely make it up the stairs without wheezing. 
But it's not because you put the tobacco product in your mouth and lit it and sucked in the poisonous fumes. It's because the government didn't hide away the packets like they've done now in the supermarket between that flimsy wall and the shop assistant. It's because there weren't enough warnings about it, even though from birth you've known that smoking will probably kill you. It's not your fault! Hey, you! Who hasn't sent any job applications off? You can't work because of all of the immigrants. It's got nothing to do with you. The immigrants are taking all the jobs. And if you're not making enough money from the handouts that we give you, it's because the immigrants are taking all the handouts as well. Yes, they are simultaneously taking all of the jobs and not working. Nothing is your fault. God bless the United Kingdom. That was beautiful. <laughs> Well, what's going on in Scotland? They're not doing much to uh, do anything about the reputation for the Scots uh, and alcohol, <laughs> are they? Well, yeah, it's the the first country to to do this, isn't it? To bring in minimum pricing. Minimum pricing for alcohol. Now, health campaigners are already asking for the rest of the UK to follow suit. Mm. We don't know if it'll work yet. They're, they're Just hang on a minute. Well, yeah. But has this been done anywhere else? Well, no. No, no. it hasn't. So uh, they're just convinced it'll be... The whole idea of when you do research is you don't know what the result is going to be. That's why you do the research. Hmm. Uh, you know, apart from certain radio stations, I've known radio stations that have wanted to make on-air changes and have done research, hoping the research will come back, um, backing up what they're about to do anyway. Yes. If the research yes. doesn't do that, the research disappears. If the research does say that, well, then it justifies them doing what they <laughs> want to do. Radio, I think, is the only industry where they do research hoping to get the result that they want yeah. rather than just going, well, let's just do some research and find out, which is the way you should do research. And so they're, not, they're dismissing this thing as it's not research, it's not an experiment. In Scotland, they're having minimum pricing for alcohol. That's right, yeah. They think it will reduce the problems with alcohol. Yeah, some of the cheaper alcohol, they, they reckon it will uh, prevent some of the sales of that. Right. They don't think it might just lead to more alcohol-related crime. Surely it will mean more shoplifting and off-licenses. Because if people booze is more expensive. It. Yeah. Hmm. Because what this basically does is said, it's okay for you to be poor, but you're not allowed to have a drink. Because if you're well off and have a problem with alcohol, this is not going to affect you at all. In fact, couldn't somebody argue that if you've got a problem with alcohol, it just means that you're going to spend more on the booze and ruin your life a bit quicker? Because you've yeah. got a problem with alcohol. Yeah. Drugs are illegal. And there are people that get addicted to drugs and have issues with drugs, and it costs them everything. People get addicted to gambling, and it costs them everything. It costs them their life. The price of gambling is about the highest it can possibly be. You lose your house. You lose your family. You lose everything. The price of addiction, not just gambling, but drugs and alcohol, the price of addiction is as high as it can possibly be. You lose your entire life. They reckon putting, what, 20p on a can of lager is going to make any difference to that? <laughs> the news this morning that uh, in France, they're on about bringing in a law to make it illegal for blokes to wolf whistle at women. You have some concerns about this, Scott. Now I represent um, a movement called MFB. And that is men fight back. Okay. Okay, well, Scott. If you're yep. a man, yep. if you're a man in a position of power, yep. you really need to stick up for your own sex. Okay. And if you would, please. Okay. We're relying on people like you in the public eye. Now, I'm after something called equality. Right. And that's right across the board. Yeah. And a lot of women nowadays, I mean, back in the 90s, it's not a new thing, women started going to watch uh, dance troops, all-male dance troops called the Dream Boys. Yeah. Stuff like this. And, and others, yeah. 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 Now, uh, you get 
just as many women, ravenous women, that will lech quite openly, and they get away with it because society deems it acceptable over young guys in pubs and laughing at men's demise. Men are portrayed as buffoons on adverts and in, in television and in life in general. And this is where I believe quite strongly that the balance needs to be redressed. And if you want equality, girls, then you're going to have to meet us in the middle. Because if you don't, guess what? We're going to be in a dem demographic winter. The population's going to go down. We're not going to want you. You're going to get the weak guys, the guys that you can control. But this is what they want anyway. They want the guys that are going to give them all the resources and all the money, which is what it's all about. So, Scott, you're saying that the the women are there's a, there's a campaign to actually degrade men and devalue them so that the women can have more power. Is that what you're saying? Uh, exactly. Okay. And I should think that if any man any man hasn't noticed it, then he's had his head in the sand like an ostrich for the last few years. So when when people use the too. phrases like "man flu," that's degrading to men. Well, is that all part guys, of it? Us being guys, we don't take exception of any silly little thing yeah. like man flu or anything like that. Yeah. We, we we haven't got our head in a cloud. We're not trying to make a point. Well, we wouldn't get away with dangerous. describing something as woman flu, would we? That would be deemed a sexist. But man well, flu the, seems acceptable. The, the, the word sexism seems to only exist when it benefits a woman. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's a shovel for her to dig with, basically. When you go to a bar in a pub or you go to a restaurant in any place up and down the country or indeed in the Western culture, you will see men paying 90% of the bills. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. I used to work in a restaurant and I saw it all the time. Now, if they want equality, then I'm all for it. I only accept a woman that is my peer and my equal. If she's not, she can hit the highway. Now, okay. this is not a new thing. Okay, well, we're running out of time here, uh, Scott, but uh, wolf whistling then, should it be allowed or not? Because in France, they're going to fine people for wolf whistling, fine men, I'm, I'm guessing, for wolf whistling. Well, as I've said, it goes on with women too. Women, you know, they, they do it as much as men. If they want to be pseudo men, then they're going to have to tough up and they're going to have to be like us. If they don't like it, then then they just have to swallow it, won't they? Because the nature of a man is to notice um, a, a palatable woman. Now, secretly, if they're honest, they actually, I believe they actually like it. They want to be um, lusted after. They spend 45 minutes in front of the mirror every morning. Before okay, well, 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 let's find out. Let's find out. If you are a lady, uh, do you want to be wolf whistled? Do you enjoy being wolf whistled? Has Scott got a point here? Well, there's some thieves over in Spain who thought they carried out the perfect heist. They managed to get loads of bottles of wine. I mean, Spanish wine, they thought, brilliant, we can sell this on, we can make a, a small fortune from this. Unfortunately, they, well, then later found it was alcohol free and it had little <laughs> to no value. Uh, so there's been all this Spanish wine which has been dumped at the side of a road in Spain. And the only explanation for it is that well, it's been stolen, and the thieves thought, we can't shift this. Yeah. We've, we've now got a lorry load of Nick's Spanish wine. Um, have you ever tasted alcohol-free wine? I've not, no. It's horrible. Oh, is it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, I don't drink anymore, mm. so I will enjoy a fake beer. Yeah, they're all right. Yeah. Uh, the best ones, if you want to try this, even if you do drink alcohol, the best ones are the Cobra, alcohol-free mm -hmm. Cobra. It's fantastic. The Bex Blue. That's a great beer. And there's yeah. a generic one you get in the supermarkets that's just called Bavarian. <laughs> Sainsbury's sell it in cans. You know, bizarrely, some of that beer is actually the, the nicest tasting. It's great. Yeah. It's called Bavarian. There's no alcohol in it. But, it, mm. you know, maybe it's all the years of not drinking. To me, it tastes like real beer now. But yeah. uh, the, the, the thing that you notice as well is you can just have one. Yeah. I couldn't do that with a six pack. If I bought a six pack of real beer, why? Oh, just have another one. Oh, yeah, God, just yeah. have another. With the fake one, I can have one. So maybe that points 
to maybe I had a bigger problem than I'm willing to admit. <laughs> perhaps. But, perhaps. But I had, um, when was it at Christmas? Somebody bought us a bottle of alcohol-free wine. Yeah. And I used to like wine, red yeah. and white. Ugh. What's it taste of? I mean, obviously I don't wine. Know, it just, but... Yeah, it just doesn't work. I and mean, wine needs alcohol in it. Part of the taste of wine hmm. is alcohol. It clearly is. It's not necessarily with an alcohol-free beer that tastes great if you get the right one. There were some rubbish ones. Caliber used to be awful. I don't yeah. even know if you can still get that now. I it's think you can. It's terrible. Oh, is it? I, I remember actually a radio station that I used to work at when they first brought out Caliber. Yeah. Uh, they were obviously promoting it. And we ended up with like 500 bottles of this stuff yeah. in an office. And it was there for a, a, quite a while. The interesting thing about Caliber, mm. if you've ordered it in a pub and it, it came in a bottle in mm. a pub, Often pubs have their glass door fridges a little bit colder than you'd normally have. Your fridge at home is yeah. normally about four degrees Celsius. Hmm. Often pubs will have them cranked right down because they want to serve icy cold beer, yeah. particularly in the summer. If you ordered Caliber in a bottle out of one of those fridges, often there'd be ice in it because <laughs> there's no alcohol in it to stop oh, it. Yes. So you can get yeah, beer. Course. You can get beer down to a much colder temperature yeah. before yeah. it freezes because it's got the alcohol. Because it's got the alcohol yeah. in it. With the non-alcohol one, it often, it often have lumps of ice in, in the beer. It was just the caliber was rubbing. But I can see why these fellas had a, a time shifting alcohol-free wine. It's just horrible. I don't know who drinks it. It's well, awful. Well, they, they, they said that they soon realized the wine was non-alcoholic and of no great value. Plus, it tasted like cat's wee. <laughs> <laughs> there are about 25 loads of this in one big fly tip, completely unopened. Yeah. No, they're not going to shift that. Not no. going to shift that. Uh, when, it, when have you had this? When you've tried something that's a bit different, you've tried to go like, I don't know, the veggie version of something or the alcohol, and it's rubbish. Or when it's been great. When you've had the unleaded version of the, <laughs> the traditional one. When you've tried the unleaded and it either worked out of this world. I mean, I had a... For the first time, I had a halloumi burger yesterday. It's terrific. Have you had one of those? Yeah, they're they're pretty good. And you're not a veggie or anything. No, no, halloumi's good. Yeah, good well, I, 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 as you know, I, I, I gave up beef when I first came back to Britain in '97 because I didn't trust it because of the mad cow disease. Mm. And after a while, I gave up lamb and then pork and then whatever, and then I was just left with fish. And I described myself as a vegetarian. But last couple of months, I've not had the fish, so I. I, I might be a vegetarian now. Yeah. I might be. Yeah. I don't know. The only thing holding it back is I hate vegetables. <laughs> really do. <laughs> I don't like them. You a I don't I mean, know what I am. If you're into the cheese. But there's this, this new block of flats we've moved to. Dell runs this diner. I think it's called, is it J's or JB's diner? It's in, is it Purewell or Purewell? What, how do you say the name of I where I live? <laughs> I don't even know the name of where I live. Is it Purewell? <laughs> it's Purewell. Purewell. I right. think yeah. He's, there's a parade of shops there with a Pizza Hut and a Chinese and uh, and a Stop and Rob convenience store. It's near the near a car garage as well. No, that's it? close. Was oh, that close? Yeah, it was a Hyundai right. garage. They're still send, sending me spam email. Are they? Yeah. Well, well, I don't know what they're doing. Well, anyway, Dell, this fella, Dell, great bloke. He runs this this like burger bar. Hmm. I hope I'm not doing it a disservice. It's a takeaway place, and I've had his veggie burger and I've had his uh, falafel burger, yeah. but I tried the halloumi yesterday it's great i yeah. reckon that's better than having a a meat burger i've not i don't even it. know what it is i've not had it in burger form so it's it i first had it when we went on holiday to cyprus yeah so you get your your greek feta cheese and i saw halloumi on there as well we right said, well try a bit of that it was amazing they're good it's good if you have it over in cyprus or any of the greek islands absolutely incredible but it's sheep and goat's milk oh don't tell that have ruined it for me why? I didn't want it to be that. Did you not? Well, I don't think what anything... did you think it was? It's cheese. I don't know what it. I don't know what it was. It's just. <laughs> it's, it's no, I don't, no, that's just ruined it for me. Is that what it is? Yeah. Sheep milk. Sheep milk. Sheep milk. I know. <laughs> it's Somebody <laughs> milked a <the> sheep. <laughs> <laughs> what were they I mean, thinking? This is, this is the thing, isn't it? The the first person who milked a cow. What were they doing? Yeah. Now sheep. Uh, maybe they no, obviously that's moved on to sheep. No, that's yeah. just ruined it for me. And goat's cheese. I never even liked that. That was a big deal. That wasn't it for a while. Blinking goat's yeah. cheese. Oh no. <laughs> you don't. Fast no, I don't. Sheep. I'm not having it. Again. It was great. I'm not having it again. <laughs> I'm not. 
<laughs> oh, I'll try though. his onion ring burger next time. You enjoyed it though, didn't you? Yeah, I'm still yeah. not. Now I know no. what it is. And I'm not interested. Oh, okay. No. Um, all right. Um, when you've gone unleaded, alcohol free or veggie or whatever it is, what have you been your good experience of it or your bad? I'm telling you, alcohol free wine is horrible. A horrible. But alcohol free beer is good. Lisa's on the phone. You want to chip in about this uh, this gender debate we're having this morning? Oh, you know what? I would be lying if I said, and I think a lot of women share this view. I lo- I would love to be wolf whistle. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> right. Put a little spring in my step. <laughs> and actually, if I'm totally honest with you, I've been known to give a few wolf whistles out myself when I'm out with the girls. You know, to right there. Any gorgeous builders or whatever. And well, oh, in, in France, you know, in France, they're on about making it against the law to wolf whistle in public. Oh, that's, that's just nuts. I'm sorry. I okay. mean, that's, I, I would find it a huge compliment if somebody was to wolf whistle me. I, Hello, I'd smile, I'd say thank you very much. So Scott, who who belongs to an organisation, Men Fight Back, you agree with him that this is just going too far now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Ridiculous. Lisa, thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye, Graham. Okay. I will say some here as well. Okay, <laughs> there we go. All right, no, <laughs> good job we're not on the radio in France. All right, okay, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Lisa. You built one of these IKEA wardrobes, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, quite a few of them actually. Have you really? Yeah, yeah the wardrobe it is the. I mean, we've made like tables and cabinets and stuff mm. in the in the past from IKEA, and that's the thing with IKEA. They're like drug dealers. <laughs> they they start you off on the soft stuff. Yeah, you know. Well, we started off bedside cabinets. Bedside cabinets, that kind of thing. Coffee tables, Stool. whatever. Stool. Yeah. yeah, and then they know when you're completely hooked. That's when they get you in on the real hard stuff, the self-assembly wardrobe. Oh, yeah. And as you know, we're moving to this new tiny flat, much smaller than the one we're in now. The one we're in now is small, Mm. two-bedroom flat, but this other one's even smaller. And so we've had to throw a lot of stuff out, and storage is a main issue. Well, this is it. In that sort of place, you need to find somewhere to tidy everything away where you can't see it and it doesn't look cluttered. That's right, exactly. Because you only have to leave, like, you know... Your mobile phone out and the place looks cluttered. It's that small. <laughs> right. So we got this idea of getting these. They're, they're called PAX, P-A-X. Yeah, we bought one of them yeah, at the last that, place. Yeah, and this thing went floor to ceiling mm-hmm. in the bedroom. We thought this will be great because it'll go right to the ceiling. There's no waste of space. There's no space on top of the wardrobe. Yep. You can't put like suitcases or whatever you normally put on top of war- wardrobes that make them look untidy. It yep. goes right to the top and door shut. You can't put all the suitcases. You just shut the doors on them. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much you might have an inch left over at the top and you can't even see the dust on top. An inch left over on yeah. the top. Normally the way. So we ordered this thing and it was there was so much of it, it had to be delivered. You could you couldn't even yeah. get it in the car because it's floor to ceiling. Mm. It's you know big. The heavy things as well. Yeah, and there's baskets and all kinds of things, drawers to make, and you know, mm-hmm. it's a big job. So we had this thing delivered. So Friday night we went round there because we've got the new flat now, but we're still in the rental that we're in now. So we've basically got two flats on the go um, until the uh, beginning of next month. So. We had it all delivered. We went down. That was going to be our Friday night. Not much of a Friday night, but, you well, know. Many a Friday night I've spent decorating recently. Uh, well, your new yeah. place. You know all about it. So uh, we get it all out of the packet, and then we go through all the hundreds of bits that come with it. Uh-huh. Check that this, this. So we got, we're supposed to have 16 of these, four of those round things, five of those, one of these plastic things. These angle iron pieces. 120 pieces of dowel. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the, these pieces, no, that's not them. See, these have got a flat head. They've got a more roundy head. That's them there. That's it. So we get them all laid out, count them all out. They're all there. Get all the pieces, make sure all the other pieces are mm. there. Unpack everything. Right. First job, I'll get that, the destructions out. First job. Screw these things into here. No, it's not that way. See, it's got a groove on that side. So it's not that side. It's the other side. It's three holes back in, right? It's that hole there that goes in there. Screw that in. Screw that in there. Tap these bits of dowel in these end bits. Mm-hmm. 
uh, or well push them in and then tap them in with the screwdriver because they don't push in uh, go through all this so we've now got I think we've got four of these big panels with like screws and bits of angle iron on them and dowels sticking out of them and all the rest of it yeah preparation's key yes all right so I said uh, well if for the next bit we need to stand this up this piece up to get this next bit in by the looks of things mm. on here so we're a couple of hours in now so I go to stand it up. I am stand up. What, well, is the ceiling not high enough? Well, you could put it that way, or you could say that the panel's too long. Oh, no. But surely you, you measured it, didn't you? It was measured. Yeah. Have to say, not by me. Right. By, by, in fact, using that phrase, I'm already in a lot of trouble now. There was the minimum of an eye roll at my house just now. You pro- it was, it, <laughs> I almost heard it. <laughs> yeah, it was audible. It yeah, was an audible yeah. eye roll. Julie had measured the... You're in so much trouble. I know. <laughs> Julie had measured the floor-to-ceiling height before they'd put the carpet in. Oh. I guess you've got underlay under there, haven't you? So that, what? It's a good uh, inch. It's got to yeah, be a good inch, yeah. show. Because Julie said there should have been 10 mil clearance, uh, you know, a centimetre mm. clearance at the top, between yeah. the top and the ceiling. Now, who knows? Because it wouldn't fit. Oh, no. So what are you going to do? Well, I rang Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> and said, look, this has happened. Yeah. We measured it up, didn't allow for the carpeting. It's too big. We need the shorter one. And, like, you don't order just a wardrobe. Mm. I think there were, like, 12 different things you order eat because it's, it's, it's pick and mix. Yeah, yeah. So I had to order all of the other things and then say, look, can you come around and pick up? So we've, we've got to pack up. Last night we were packing up. <laughs> what, everything you put together? Yeah, taking it to bits, <laughs> putting it together, and... Taking like these ripped cardboard sheets yes. and taping them together. Because you're not careful when you do. You just no, you rip them open. You think, yeah, you will go. It's a good job. I, I, yeah. I reckon if it had been in our current place, I would have thrown the bits out. I would have. Mm. Let's get these out of here. Let's give us some room to work. Yeah. But because the flat's empty, you're all right. You've got a bit of space. Mm. Really, I would have and any through. So we have to tape. And that was last night taping up. But when I was on the phone to him, they said, "Well, if you you know you tape it all up, we will collect it." And so, well, can you collect it on the same day as you delivered the other one, yeah. the one that we do? Yeah. So she goes through it, and it took ages because I had to order individual pieces with, with order numbers. They only yeah. work by numbers. I'm sure the lady on the phone had no idea what I was ordering, even though, even though I'm on the website on the phone. I'm on the phone, and I'm on the computer looking at the numbers and the pictures mm. of the little drawers and all the rest of it. And so... For I must have been on the phone for half an hour, but it was half an hour of shame. <laughs> the lady on the phone was lovely. Yes. But still, I felt it. You, you do feel like an idiot, don't well, you? Well, I failed. Yeah. Uh, and at the end of it, she says, oh, and she says, because you've gone for the shorter one now, you've saved 200 pounds. Well, that's not bad, is it? Expecting me to go, great. Yeah. And I just went... Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's breakfast. Don't wolf whistle in France. It's illegal there. In fact, they've just increased the fines for it. What do you reckon about this then, Sam? I reckon it's a load of tish. <laughs> right. Sorry, I, I know that sounds really quite blunt, but it is. I mean, wolf whistling has been around for years and years and years. Nobody's ever complained before now. Um, and... It's it's a few, it's, it's like a minuscule amount of people that don't like it. You get wolf whistled at, whether you're male or female, and in general, it's it's quite appreciated. You know, if you get wolf whistled, there must be something right with you. So do you think this law is being brought in by people who've never been wolf whistled then? I don't know. I mean, you get, you get some people that just want to complain about everything. Yeah. Um, but quite frankly, I mean, if somebody wolf whistled me now, it'd be the first time in about 25 years and I'd be over the moon. <laughs> I'm Graham Mack. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If you like it, put a link to it on Twitter or a like on Facebook.
and subscribe at Apple Podcasts. Why is this the greatest country on earth, Chris? Because nothing is ever nothing our fault. Nothing is your fault, that's right. If you can't get a job, it's not your fault. It's because of all the immigrants. If you smoke, it's not your fault. It's not because you put the thing in your mouth and light it. It's because the NHS aren't doing enough to help you give up. If you're broke, it's not because you spend too much money. It's because there's too many adverts on TV making you buy things. It's all the adverts fault. Nothing is your fault. And the biggest one of all, if you're fat. It's not because you eat too much and don't exercise. There must be a hundred reasons now, Chris. I, I'm pretty sure, yeah. yeah Ranging absolutely. from, oh, adverts again. Adverts oh, well, are usually... Well, Tony the Tiger and the Milky Bar well, in the firing line yesterday, I'm going they? to get onto that. <laughs> If you're overweight, it's not because you eat too much and don't exercise. It's because uh, fast food is too easy to get. It's because, well, your doctor is fat. Remember mm. that one? That was my favorite one. You're fat because your doctor's fat. And, and adverts of uh, different things, uh, whatever. And, and the sugar tax came too late yes. for you. Yeah. So future generations won't be fat. Um, right. Now we get on to why your kids are fat. And your kids are not... Remember, nothing is your fault. Nothing is your fault. Your kids are not fat because you feed them too much and drive them to school. That's not why they're fat. Don't be silly. That wouldn't make them fat. No, they're fat because of video games. They're fat because of fizzy drinks. They're fat because of two-for-one offers at the supermarket. Mm -hmm. They're fat for... They're not fat because you feed them too much and drive them to school and they don't get enough. It's, it's got nothing to do with that. And now another reason why your children are fat, as you pointed out, Chris, Tony the Tiger, the Milky Bar Kid, yeah. and the Honey Monster. That's right. These are the three people, these are the only reasons why your kid's fat. There's no other reason. If there was an apocalypse today, yes. they would be riding on horseback, <laughs> wouldn't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. They are the three horsemen <laughs> of the obesity apocalypse. They are the Milky Bar Kid, who can already ride a horse. Yeah, that's uh, right. <laughs> Tony the Tiger, who could probably handle himself on a horse. Yep, yep. The Honey Monster, I'm not so sure. Big Columbus and maybe a shy horse. <laughs> maybe you could get them to ride <laughs> the Honey Monster. I don't know. But they're the reason why your kids are fat. And... Jamie Oliver has waded into this. Oh, has he? Oh, yeah, he's waded in. Uh, TV, this is from the Sky News website this morning. Mm -hmm. TV chef and campaigner Jamie Oliver told a committee, this is a cabinet committee, that cartoons and superheroes should not be used to, quote, pedal rubbish. Because we know that everything that Jamie Oliver pedals is far from rubbish. He's warned Theresa May to act now as the future of the NHS is at stake. So Jamie Oliver. Now, when I was a kid, I was a skinny kid. Hmm. And I was a skinny kid for two important reasons. Those two important reasons, my mother was a terrible cook. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> Her idea of an evening meal would be brown chips that had been fried in chip fat that could be carbon dated because they never threw it away. <laughs> it went in the cupboard, the pan went in the yep. cupboard yep. with the chip fat still in it so that next time she wanted to make chips, she would take the pan out and use the same fat over and over and over again. You know what? Same for me. Yeah. Over and over again. It's a generational yeah. thing. This was how our mothers operated. The chips would get gradually get browner and browner yeah. and browner. Terrible chips. But those beautiful days when eventually the oil was changed. Oh, I mean, wow. that, yeah, golden chips. We changed the oil on our car more often than we <laughs> changed the oil in that chip pan. <laughs> <laughs> we looked after our car's engine, a Chrysler Avenger, than we did the children's health. Anyway, so brown chips. Mm -hmm. 
with cold corned beef that had originally been in a tin but was being served from in between two plates from yep. inside the fridge. Now, the two plates, plates. they're magical plates. They keep things fresh. I don't know how they do it. Tupperware took ages to get that burping thing going, but mothers use just two plates. So you'd have like these brown chips and then this freezing cold corned beef. To her, that was an evening meal. She was just an awful cook. And most of my friends had mothers who's, who, who were awful cooks as well. Terrible. Most of them. Awful. So that was the one thing that kept me skinny. Hmm. The other thing, the meals at school were inedible. We were served bullets. We were served frog spawn. We were served rubber. Masquerading as food. So we, consequently, we didn't eat that much because it was horrible. So we were skinny. We walked to school and at playtime, we ran around kicking anything. If we didn't have a ball, it'd be a stone or anything we could find. We, we just ran around. We just never stopped moving and we didn't eat as much. We were all skinny. Before PE, yeah. every single week, we had to run a kilometre around the field. Now, yeah. when you're younger, a kilometre's quite a long way. Long way. I heard the other day that the school stopped doing that yeah. because it was too far. Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. So, along comes Jamie Oliver, the bloke who's talking about Tony the Tiger and the Milky Bar Kid and the Honey Monster. Hmm. Along comes Jamie Oliver with his cooking show and he starts teaching mums how to cook tasty food. Then he doubles down. He releases DVDs and books on how to prepare tasty meals for children. He goes further than that. He improves school meals. And he's made the food that our children are eating edible and tasty. And now the kids are eating too much. And now all the kids are fat. This week we had statistics from primary schools. They, oh, we did, yes. Yeah. Talk about your circumstantial evidence. They're saying from the time when a kid starts school to the time when a kid leaves school, their weight is increasing it's out of control. Yeah, yeah. You got the. You, you can find that story I'm just, there. I'm just going to have a look for it now. Yeah. yeah. Let's have a look. This was a story this week. A story not involving. Oh, here we go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, analysis has found nearly twice as many children in England are severely obese by the time they finish primary school than the when they school. start. Yeah. So they're saying more than 22,000 year six pupils have a weight problem. Yeah. Really so these so are what's, the stats. What's the difference? School meals. You don't have to be any kind of scientist to look at those figures and work out what's making the kids fat. They weren't fat before they went to school. By the end of primary school, they're all fat. It's the school meals. And that's because Jamie Oliver has banned turkey twizzlers. Turkey twizzlers a very, very unhealthy thing to eat. Hmm. But the thing was, they tasted so bad, the kids weren't eating them. So now they're being fed food they can actually eat. But it all gets back to my main point. Nothing is your fault. And like I said, if your kids are fat, it's not your fault. It's Jamie Oliver's fault! Bob's Breakfast. Mm -hmm.